Welcome to the Forking Healthy podcast, a place where two sisters have cheeky chats about everything natural health and wellness. I'm your host, Jenny Soder. I am also your host, Cheryl Berecki. Together, we hope to inspire, entertain, and motivate you with our knowledge and decades of experience in the natural health and fitness industry. So if you're ready, let's get Forking Healthy. Hello, hello. In this episode, we talk all about embracing the common cold. We share thoughts on how flu season is just a farce. And Cheryl and I throw in a few funky home remedies that we have tried in the past. I divulge how many supplement drawers I actually have. And I talk all about sneaking chewable Tylenol as a kid and perhaps hallucinating when I was ill. Cheryl speaks about everything from Flintstone vitamins to the importance of focusing on prevention, how stress, fresh air, diet, and supplements are key. And we talk about where to start if you are just getting going in the natural health world. So who's up for some banter? We're back. It's Jenny. It's Cheryl. And today we have a hot, well, cold topic. <laughs> Good one. Good one. <laughs> I'm, all I'm so the ready for these fast fork and five. I can't wait. Okay. These are my questions for you today. Number one, how often do you get a cold? Now, probably once a year, twice a year max. Number two, do you believe there is a flu season? Uh, no, it's called post Halloween, <laughs> post Thanksgiving, <laughs> post Christmas, post it. It's called sugar season. Yeah. <laughs> and number three, how many over the counter cold med- medications do you have in your home right now? Zero. Number four, do you do burpees when you have a cold and what is wrong with you? <laughs> I believe it's a really good flusher, depending on wh- if your cold is nasal or chest. Mm-hmm. The answer is probably yes. Okay. <laughs> and number five, what is the funniest thing that you have tried to get rid of a cold? Oh God. When I, the first thing that comes to mind is the onions on the feet. I when you it. first <laughs> introduced that to me, I just thought, and to my child, yeah. I, I, he must've just thought I was insane to making him go to sleep with onions uh, or cold socks. You know, those ones definitely yeah. uh, would have to be on my list here. Are you ready for your fast fork and five? I'm so ready. Go. Okay. There's again, so much overlap people here. This is what happens when you're sisters. How many times do you get sick per year? Uh, Maybe once. How many drawers of supplements do you currently have? (laughs) (laughs) Oh boy. Uh, Well, it depends what you consider supplements, but there's gotta be at least six. Oh my God. Some of the drawers are small. (laughs) Some are not. (laughs) Some people have garages for gear. They have garages for supplements, people. In your opinion, what's the biggest contributor to the cold and flu season in quotation marks? Sugar, consumption, and lack of sleep. The most successful prevention tool for cold and flu season is? Proper nutrition and hydration and sleep. And lastly, are you a man colder or a super mom ignorer when you're sick? No one knows if I'm sick. <laughs> she is not a man colder. People. I am not a man colder. I was going to add a man cold con- uh, question in there for you too, but I already knew the answer so I couldn't yeah. do it. Who the hell has time to be a man colder? Yeah, not me. Not so me. last time, last episode, one of the last episodes anyways, we, we were talking about... Um, like our, you know, our routines when we were younger. So this, I, you know, I, I, I want to hear what you have to say about how you responded to colds, the common colds this season then. And and how does that differ from now? Oh God. So like getting sick when I was a child, I have vivid memories, Um, obviously different sicknesses, but um, I was, well, I did not know, but now I know I was an unhealthy child. And so I wasn't actually able to generate a fever. And so every time I would get a fever, I would actually hallucinate. 
Um, my mom just thought I was wacko, uh, which she was I partially <laughs> am, but um, I would hallucinate. And so it was my body not being able to generate the fever. And the reason was because I constantly ate chewable <laughs> Tylenol. No, that's later, later. Chewable Tylenol. I would crawl oh, yeah. up into our bathroom cupboard that we had and we weren't we didn't really have candy in the house but these chewable I think they were like grape or strawberry they were so I don't good. know you didn't leave any for me yeah I would <laughs> I would sneak them and like I shudder now but I would chew them just randomly as candy um and so I was never able to generate a fever so that's how I responded to cold then I remember <laughs> having like ginger ale from mom yes. and maybe like Lipton packaged soup and soda crackers till you can't see any liquid um and now now I I open all those eight cupboards <laughs> <laughs> I open them all. I open them all. What nice. What do you remember as a kid, like um, about getting sick and having a cold? Um, you know, like I, I, it's funny when I think now, like having a a kid in school and and the whole, you know, c word, cold, this that. Did you, did you, you don't... seriously drop that bomb? <laughs> I can't believe I got. I, I'm going there. I'm going there, people. <laughs> It's that you can't even go to school when you have anything, right? But I don't remember actually staying home that much. I remember being put, even though we had a stay-at-home mom, I really remember going to school sick. Um, you'd have to be pretty sick to stay home. And if you were sick, it was uh, the Campbell's soup would come out for Ooh, sure. Canada. Or the or the Lipton's uh, just depended, right? And, and the soda crackers. And if you were if your stomach was okay, you would put butter and ketchup on your <laughs> soda crackers, if you remember correctly. You, on the other hand, would, would I tell my kid this all the time still, she would take an entire package of soda crackers and she crunched them all up into tiny little pieces and dump it into her Campbell's soup so that it would just be a mound of soggy crackers, most disgusting thing ever. And then she'd yeah. side that with the ginger ale to the, the two liter bottle downstairs that dad would hide. It would um, last like six yeah. months and it was so flat. It, it was, was so, so flat, disgusting. so flat. Yeah. I remember prevention being Flintstone vitamin if we oh. could afford them if they were on sale we would get yeah. them and uh I remember taking Tylenol to suppress for sure I do remember some good things like opening windows was a big thing in our house when we were sick and to air things out and like fresh air and and you know pushing through was still a really big thing but to now I would say if you ask me how I respond it's like twofold it's only two things it's rest and support that's it and yeah. what that yeah. looks like just depends on what my body is where my body has been lately, how I need to support it best. What are the symptoms that's different depending on cold flu? What, what is it I'm responding to? Yeah, uh, definitely. It's just so different. So, so what types of tools do you use now? Um, for me, life is about prevention because, um, you know, I have come from this, uh, you know, not so long ago, two years ago, I had autoimmune. And so I was sick. If you would have asked me then, you know, just two years ago, how many times I'm sick in a year, I probably would have said six. So anytime my kid came home with something, I would get, it. I couldn't fight anything until I overcome, overcame that autoimmune, um, piece of the puzzle now more than ever prevention is key for me and and allows me to really uh, mitigate most things so uh, that my prevention tool, tools are uh, stress management sleep fresh air diet and supplements plain yeah. and simple like the foundational things to everything are um, the tools that I use the really um, simple so-called basic and then the support feature where it's like about how do I support when I, when, if, and when I am fighting the germs and I know I am and at what state am I at? So am I, you know, am I early? Did I catch it early? Then what I'm doing to my routine um, is, is going to be uh, different than if I'm full blown wake up and uh, I'm in a snotty mess. For me, it's a lot about trusting my system and listening to it and then responding. 
Yeah. What, yeah. what about you? What, what, I mean, you have eight drawers of tools. So yeah, what, I, got what, a lot of tools. I, I don't even know where to start. Do you have a roadmap? Do you have a table of contents for all of those supplements? I, I do actually, I consider there to be four different types of tools. So let me back up by saying, you know, you asked me a question of how often I get a cold and I say maybe once a year. So it's, it's, I'm, I perhaps get sick more often, but I don't let it get to anything yeah. past feeling like run down yes. or maybe a trickle in the throat or an itch. And I, res- and I'm that for me. And when I teach people, um, in my classes, um, especially in the master class, we have a natural tool, um, section on how to respond to acute illnesses Amazing. using natural tools. It is, it immediately you have to act. And so of course, prevention is always there. And that's why you don't get sick that often. But for me, it's essential oils, homeopathics, supplements, and then natural practices. And those practices could be onions. <laughs> they could be cold socks. It could be cold plunges or hot Epsom salt yes. baths. It could also be hydration and nutrition. Yeah. And so those four things I always use. I don't ever use one thing at a time. Cause I find if you hit it from different angles, inside, outside, upside down, literally, then, literally yeah. it, inversions, yeah. yes. rebounding, yeah. Yeah. <laughs> then you're going to never, it's never going to progress into something. And so I am exposed to so many different people and people know me as like, I don't sanitize. I would eat chips after going to Costco without washing my hands. Now people are probably, yeah, people are probably like, I'm done with this podcast now. Cause you're you don't, gross. you don't have the five second rule when something falls no. on the floor. No, there's like not. Yeah. You, you embrace the germs, right? I do. And so what, what is the, for, you know, the listeners out there that may be new to this being your jam, what, what is yeah. the benefit of that? So embracing your germs and trusting your innate immune system is, um, it's integral to building that, you know, you, you can't, you know, go in and lift a 25 pound dumbbell doing a bicep curl without constantly having little tiny reps of five pounds over and over to build that muscle. So you build that immune system and that muscle of that immune system by constantly being exposed to germs and supporting your body and having, you know, more nutrients than anti-nutrients. You're giving yourself more energy than you're depleting every single day, which I think is so important. So like, how do you, um, how do you respond to the, the, you know, clients or even just friends talking about, oh, well, my kid's in school. So he's bringing on the germs. So like, how do you deal with that? And what do you teach people or what do you implement in your home to kind of throw that myth out there? I, I think, um, especially like I, this, it's funny you say that there's like Facebook mom groups, right? That's just like the most common, the most mm-hmm. common question on Facebook. My daughter spiked a fever. That is the most common question on a mom group. You know, I've mm-hmm. given her, and then the, the follow up is I've given her a Tylenol to suppress that um, now, or what else could I do? And, and, and so for me, it's really um, teaching people about that prevention because for me this is um this is the the basics a lot you know where i i push a lot of people to you that need to go above and beyond as far as um, their immune systems go in a very customized way but it's about that them learning um that diet and and routine have a big part of prevention Mm -hmm. leading into the common cold and the season xyz but also for them to learn that they can build their own toolkit you know that they can 
um, learn to support versus suppress, and they can learn to listen to their body. And those that that piece being really threefold that that sort of like diet and routine um, from a prevention, but also building and being ready, and then also listening and responding to that. I think that's super important. Let, let's play a little game. So just just so people can understand the difference between supporting and suppressing a cold. So suppressing is when we simply take away the symptoms, right? It's like, oh, we don't like you. We're going to shut oh, you up. We're going to do that. Yeah. And supporting is acknowledging that the body is trying to eliminate something and to encourage it. So fire off some things. And I'm going to critically think, Let's, let's do like three or four things and I'll respond to you, suppress or support. We'll go back and forth. So, uh, echinacea. So echinacea is supporting. Depends how you're using it though. Yeah. See, it's not always cut and dry, yeah, is it? It's not, it's not. It's like if you were to ask me workouts, you know? Yeah. Ask me workouts. Do it. Yeah. <laughs> do it. Say it. <laughs> I want you to do it. <laughs> burpees. <laughs> yeah, burpees. It could be, it could be ignoring. This is one thing that I yeah. find. That's why I say that the routine is so important. People that push through and keep their their the routine, even their you know their body is trying to tell them something and they'll yeah. go on and they're trash their body. Yes, can it be helpful to sweat it out, so to speak? Yeah. Sure, but that depends. That's not yeah. kind of dry. You know, what For if sure. you have just some initial symptoms where you're gonna, you know, do a light workout to help you sweat some of those toxins out? Sure, but what if you're already like sick and coughing? Let's let's rest, yeah. you know. So. I think what, what I was getting at there, I, I think that even if it's a natural tool, sometimes it can be suppressing. So yes, if we're right. taking a look at using something like we have a fever and we're using something like peppermint to cool the body down, that's yes. not necessarily supporting. It can be suppressing it. Whereas if we put on like extra and we extra clothes and we rest, then we're encouraging that sweat process and that elimination. And yeah. therefore we are supporting it. Right. Yeah, so one. we, so we need to ask those vital questions on people, you know, with people. And if you hire someone um, and you work with people, then like ask the hard questions, like, okay, how is this helping and what is it doing? Yeah. And that's a, interesting. I think one of the last times Jason was sick and then I, you said, what do you have in your toolkit? And then I'll tell, you know, vitamin D, vitamin C, echinacea, elderberry syrup. And I'm listing you off all these things. And you say, don't you dare add in all of those things. Yeah. It's too much for the body. And I think yeah. that's our inclination, especially as mothers is to just like, let, I want to take it away. I want to do as much as I can. And sometimes sure. more is not better. And you often pull us back as a family, like, whoa, Oh, hold the line. Let's yeah, do a yeah. few things and then listen to the body. That's what I appreciate about your approach so much is, is just about, here's a few steps. Let's listen. Here's a few steps. Let's listen. We mm -hmm. often forget and we want to just jump in and, and bandaid the situation. I, you know, that's the number one thing that I get leading up into the win the fall and the winter. People say, what can I do to support or boost my immune system? And I'm like, no, never. I never am. And I'm a huge advocate of if you are taking away the things that are destroying your immune system eight months of the year, then you don't ever need to boost your immune system ever. Right. Yeah. So I, my supplement routine, the change between winter and summer is very minimal. I'll include yeah. more vitamin D. Yeah. And my that levels, is, I was going to say, that's yeah. it. That's it. Right. Totally. And so responding to that common cold and that, and that, and that, um, you know, some of the things that we mentioned today, what are some of the things that you started with? And, um, you know, I have all the tools, but not everyone is going to, what would you su suggest are the first few things or a few things that people can focus on? Um, for me, it was uh, gut related, like the gut yeah. and the, the, the powerhouse of it all. And keeping my gut really strong is like where I 
always recommend my clients um, begin that journey um, beyond that routine and diet piece of stress and sleep and those things. Let's let's that's the house of it all. And so if we can have a strong gut, then often we'll really very much correlate to a strong immune system. And so how do we do that? And that can be, um, you know, in making sure that our, our bowel movements are really um, consistent and strong. So we have healthy fats, fibrous foods, um, good hydration. And then um, are we adding in lots of good bacteria to to the gut so everything from foods like kombucha and sauerkraut and kimchi um, but fi high fibrous whole food colorful um, pieces and then also the supplement side of things the probiotics the digestive enzymes making sure their gut is doing a good job is a great starting point for my clients for sure what about you where like where do you get clients to start with their toolkit because you got eight they're gonna look at you and think like god damn she's got <laughs> she's got eight four and drawers how do yeah. i even begin yeah so you know obviously it's preventative it's working on the gut taking away the things that are destroying the immune system but in regards to tools and where people can start with i always suggest stocking the freezer with nutrition and hydration for times of need because when you don't feel well you're not going to want to make bone broth or Amen. soup or, you know, like you can make freezies for the kids that are not like full of sugar um, and having those things there. And then the other thing that I would say is essential oils. And the reason is because they're so multi, you can use them for many different things. It's not going to be just for that one thing. And so having just a few around that can help in many different capacities and going to someone and learning from someone on how to use them. I think those are going to give you the most bang for your buck at that point without any, with very little guidance. Yeah. And I think we often forgot, uh, like that's a whole other, you know, series of podcasts, but talking about the environment and its effect yeah. on the immune system, we, to we totally forget about those personal care um, pieces and the air in your house and those sort of things. And that's where sure. that essential oil piece can really come in in multifaceted ways that it can be introduced into your toolkit. Mm -hmm. Very cool. Sure. Lots, sure. lots of goodness here for people to um, respond really to, to this up and coming season. Yeah. And I think that, you know, we really talked about it throughout this uh, podcast and the fact that we support our clients with that, you know, common cold piece on prevention and yeah. really helping those um, systems by having those foundation, foundational healthy pieces that, you know, solid nutrition, healthy hydration, mitigating or managing stress, having that sleep. And if you have those down, there is nothing that is going to touch you, right? Yeah. Nothing. Tr putting um, that trust in your body is something we have so forgotten about, yeah, you know, that if you just do those things. Yeah. Awesome. Thanks for sharing so much. You're forking right. You're forking welcome. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> okay. So that's the capping off another one. It was great to chat and we'll see you toodles for now. Totes. Totes out. <laughs> Thank you for tuning in to the Forking Healthy podcast. If you want to stay up to date on future podcasts, make sure you follow us on Spotify and subscribe to our YouTube channel. In order for us to get into more ear holes, we would love for you to take a moment to share this episode or leave us a review. That's it for now. Forking rights. <laughs>